Chris, who sells firewood?
You know what, I'll just do that. It. Good morning. Is it like a strobe light? Oh. Oh. oh, there you go. Well, it just gets dark in here, but you know, it's last legs. Okay, well, good to know. I can see otherwise. Thank you. 
Welcome to North Falmouth Congregational Church. It is a joy to see all of you here today and welcome to those of you online joining us on Facebook or Zoom. You are welcome here. And it is such a beautiful day out, isn't it? So yeah, yes it is. So what do we say when it's a beautiful day out? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Don't you feel better already? Okay, if you don't, let's do that again. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And if I get too close to the flame, please let me know. <laughs> um, we still have our soup here. We're still collecting, um, I guess this is, this is not, maybe it is the last weekend. This is our last weekend, but you will have time early in the week if you wanna bring more soup in. I think in the later in the week, it will go to the pantries in the area. Also, the bell choir is being put together by Stephanie. Would you like to say more about that? You wanna come up to the microphone here and you can come right here. Good morning, everybody. So now that we've got a nice choir together and we've got a junior choir beginning for our, our Christmas season, I was hoping that we might have some other interested people join for the bell choir. And the goal behind that would be to start for Epiphany in January. And perhaps if there was interest in the people that chose to be part of this endeavor, we would then continue it and come back again during Lent and or Easter with the bells that we have in the music room. So it's difficult finding a time that works for people, but I have had three people have interest. Um, and in order for that to begin, it could start after service, after worship on Sundays. Um, today has already been a conflict for some people. We could do it on Wednesdays before choir, which is the choir meets at seven and the junior choir meets at six. So I could fit you in there for a half an hour time. If that is an easier one. Or before choir on Saturday morning, where the choir meets at 10 a.m. So those are the choices if they work for you. Do you need to know a lot? It would be helpful if you could keep a steady beat. It's helpful if, if <laughs> oh, I'm not being funny, so sorry. I can't, and, I laugh because I can't keep one. <laughs> and it, it would be helpful if you're, you're feeling comfortable taking a risk of using your wrist to play and to watch me so that I can cue you for chords. We can make it simple, we can make it difficult depending on the interest level. A couple of you had thought about joining the choir and kind of opted out. This would be a way for you to make some music with us and it would be wonderful to have you. So I really hope there will be people that opt to join consistently so that our beautiful church can not only have a wonderful choir, but it can also have a wonderful bell sound. Okay? And so if you wanna, you know, I think you all have my, my email, but also my, my cell phone number. I'm happy to give you after church service today. Question? I, I would like to have eight really, but if we could have five or six, it would be great if one of you is able to play two bells at the same time. If we have eight people, each person can have their own bell in an octave of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So. That's what I'm looking to try. Thank you. All right, and I hope I didn't take too much time and I hope that you'll join. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. And Lisa, is there any update on the pageant news? A couple of things. I'm gonna be speaking to a few people about the pageant after church, so don't run away. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we obviously, the pageant is a little different now because we have more adults than we have had in the past, but it's always been, or for many years, it's been intergenerational. So I hope people, we do have, Joyce is gonna join us. So we do have some people who are, are interested, which is great. Um, so I'll be talking to some people after church today. Also today is the last, uh, is, um, not the last day, but there are still some tags left on the trees, about 15 tags, which is great considering 
we're a small group and there were a lot of tags. So that's wonderful. Um, I will send out um, an emailed um, sign up um, this week for anything that's left. So anybody who's not in church will be able to um, pick something to bring in. Um, just remember that the tag that you have needs, that the gift needs to be wrapped and the tag needs to be attached to that gift. That's really important because that's how we know which family and which child gets each gift. And when are they due? Um, the 17th. 17th is the last day. So you need to be here by then. And you can drop them off during the week mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, and next Sunday and the Sunday after that. So lots of time left. Lisa, mm -hmm. you, you had boys' socks on there, which I took. Mm -hmm. But what does, what does the size mean? Boys socks? Um, I will look at my information that I received and see if there's anything more about that. And Thank maybe. You. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. I invite you now to take a deep breath and lean into this time of worship and quiet your mind and be still as we are brought into worship by the music. Good morning. <clears throat> Join me in the call to worship. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Surely God is in this space. Surely God is in this space. I see God in your face. I see God in your face. Let us worship together. Let us worship together. Please join me in the lighting of the candle, the Advent wreath, and peace is the candle we light today. How does a weary world practice peace? By listening before we speak and saying sorry when we need to, by advocating for justice and caring for our neighbor, by practicing Sabbath and forgiving 70 times seven by choosing grace over hate and opening the door for each other. There are so many ways to practice peace, 
So today we light this candle of peace as a reminder and a charge. With God's help, may we bring peace into the world. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our song of rejoicing, the refrain to angels we have heard on high, which is in your pew. Yes. Or the red hymnal, page 116. Please, please rise and body our spirit as you are able. <laughs> Join me in the responsive prayer of confession. God of laughter, God of open front doors and family reunions, we confess we often doubt good news. We move through this world waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for life to fall apart, waiting for our humanity to get the best of us. Instead of leaning into joy, we lean into scarcity. We lean into fear. We lean into isolation. Forgive us for forgetting that joy is amplified when shared. Heal the wounds we have, past hurts. Teach us how to throw open our doors like Elizabeth. Show us how to find joy in connection. Amen. Amen. Amen, Bella. Family of faith, I imagine that when we come before God with the truth of our lives, God meets us like Elizabeth meets Mary in scripture. The door is thrown open, laughter is heard, joy is felt, we are embraced, and it is holy. So trust this, believe this, you are claimed, you are loved, you are forgiven, and you are sent to serve. Find joy in that. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in our opening hymn, Comfort, Comfort, O oh My People, Black Hymnal 101, and please rise in body or spirit as you are able.
Please be seated. Okay, there we go. Bella, would you like to come down? It's so nice to see you. <laughs> come on over. Good morning. Would you like to come back here with me and look at this pretty tree? Yeah, yeah let's go look at that pretty tree. So this is, looks probably a little different from your Christmas tree. Because what color are all these ornaments? What color is that? Can you see what color they are? Are they uh, white? Um, yeah. They're white. Yes, they're white ornaments. And usually there's more color in ornaments that we have in our trees. But these are a special kind of ornament, and they're called Christmans. Christman ornaments. And I'm going to tell everybody a little bit about where Christmans came from. They go back. A little ways they go back to the 1950s and there was a woman who decided that all that color on a christmas tree was a little too much in church she didn't she didn't really like it so she thought we would come up with something that was a little simpler and that re and that reflected our christian faith okay so chrisman means christ monogram and the white stands for joy and the gold stands for, and I'm going to grab my notes so I don't get it wrong. The gold stands for uh, glory, the glory and kingship of Jesus. So these are Christian ornaments as opposed to the usual ones that we put up on our tree. So let's take a couple of these and we're going to go show them to everybody. These are a couple ornaments that probably are a little less obvious. Would you like one? You want to hold one? Here, you hold one. And let's come down here and you hold it so everybody can see, okay? So these are a little bit less obvious, maybe. Can, can you hold it way up high? Can everybody see the pretty butterfly? And the butterfly on the tree is, now my notes are upside down. The butterfly on the tree is a symbol of resurrection and everlasting life. And would you like to hold this one up now? Here, I'll trade you. Here, I'll get it. Can you hold that one up too? Hold that up nice and tall. And this is a little bit, maybe a little hard to see but this is an oil lamp and that one you might not expect i thought that one's probably not as obvious but that is a symbol of wisdom and knowledge and it comes from psalm 119 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path so that's what these two ornaments and during advent we're talking about what all these different ornaments mean because they don't look like the ones on our tree do they they look a little different do you have colorful ornaments on your tree? Yeah. Yeah. It's fun, isn't it? So, Light will come to our house. Hmm? Light will come to oh, our house. Oh, good for you. That will be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. I'm going to put these down so that I don't forget to put them back up there. All right. Would you like to say a prayer? Yeah. Okay. Can you re repeat after me? Yeah. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for Christmas. And help us to have fun. Yeah. And help us to have fun while we wait. Yeah. Amen. Wait. Oh. <laughs> okay. Would you like to come and play some games? Yeah. I got floor front. Oh, that's true. That is true. I know you want to say.
Good morning. morning. Our Old Testament scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. God's people are comforted. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, and I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, hear, is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Our New Testament reading this morning is from Luke chapter 1, 24 through 45. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took, me, took away the great disgrace I have endured among my people. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed for her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment at what was spoken to her by the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us bring our hearts together in prayer. Holy God, you are standing at the door. You are running to greet us and inviting us into your word, into relationship and into deeper joy. As we approach your word, O oh God, do not let us pass you by or allow distraction and doubt to get the best of us. Do not let us walk down this road without you. Give us the wisdom to turn and run your way. Give us the wisdom to hear your wisdom and be changed by it. With hope and gratitude, we pray, amen. Sterling Ansley was a hopeful guy. He graduated from Harvard in the 1940s. He served in World War II and he got a job as a scientist and he retired in his 60s. His, this was his philosophy for life. You try not to get, let life get you and you remember your victories and take a positive attitude. Does that sound good? Yes. Yeah, right? That sounds pretty good. But there's always a but, isn't there? <laughs> but over the years, Sterling lost touch with those whom he loved. So he had to fill out, why I'm talking about um, Sterling is because he was a part of a study, the longest study done on human happiness. It started in 1938 right when World War II was getting underway. And they decided, some researchers decided, let's do a study on happiness. So Sterling was a part of that study. Over the years, he filled out the surveys, but with each year, he stopped filling out certain questions and he'd write in the margins, why should I answer this question? And then he stopped answering the survey altogether. So one of the researchers decided to visit some folks who had dropped out of the research. And he drove all the way to Colorado to see Sterling and Sterling picked him up at the airport and they had a chat about, you know, what was going on in his life and how were his children and grandchildren? How was his sister? How was his wife? Well, he no longer lived with his wife, but he didn't want to get divorced because that would hurt his children, even though they were nearing 40. He had lost touch with his sister and he couldn't remember, he barely remembered her, her and he had lost touch with her for decades. His children he didn't see anymore because he didn't want to know, be a burden, and he didn't even know his grandchildren. He was, but that was his attitude on life. Keep a positive attitude. Don't let life get you down. He told himself he was fine and nothing was wrong. But when the researchers started asking more questions, it was clear that Sterling was experiencing pain of his isolation. I don't know what happened to Sterling, but his story is very telling. We don't thrive without connection to others. That connection is like a current of electricity giving us the energy, the life worth living, and most of all, joy. In the opening of our scripture reading this morning, we hear that Elizabeth becomes pregnant. As the good news takes shape in her womb, why didn't she jump for joy right away? She went into isolation instead. For five months, the Bible says. Did she want to protect herself from the scrutiny of her neighbors who had shamed her for her barrenness? Was she consumed with worry that something terrible might happen to this baby because she was older? Did she go into a period of silence and isolation to prepare for the birth of this son who would make way for our Lord? Maybe she wondered how she would rejoice. 
having felt that shame of barrenness for most of her life. Whatever her reasons were for going into isolation, she finally comes to a resolve to gratitude. This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. God took away her disgrace. What has it felt like when God's grace has lifted your disgrace? What has that felt like? Or the pain that you've carried around for such a long time? When you noticed it, did you notice God's grace coming in to your life? Were you grateful? And in that gratitude, did you feel a sense of joy that you were deeply cared for when things changed? Perhaps it was Elizabeth's gratitude that prepared her heart to receive Mary as Mary came through the door. Because when Mary crosses that threshold, everything changes for Elizabeth. As soon as Mary cries out her greeting, the child in Elizabeth's womb jumps for joy and fills her with the Holy Spirit. And because of the baby leaping inside her, Elizabeth can't help but respond with joy. The joy of the baby makes her feel joy, and she gives that joy to Mary and blesses her. Her joy is so contagious, it wraps around Mary like a big, warm hug. And Mary absorbs it like a sponge. And it changes everything for her, too. She came out of isolation of her own shame, fear of what Joseph might be thinking about her, shame for what the people, her neighbors, might be whispering about a pregnancy that happened before she got married. In the joy of the blessing that Elizabeth offered, Mary found comfort and affirmation in being blessed among women to carry this special baby. While we want to honor the way joy expands when we share it with others, it's important to remember that many of us experience loneliness and isolation this time of year. How many of you know people who this is a tough time for them? Yeah, I see some nodding heads. It's important to remember who will be missing at the table for those loved, for those who are feeling lonely and feel the pain of loss for someone who may have passed away this year? Who will be missing at the table this holiday season and the pain of that? I remember there were a number of years in there that I didn't feel that joy of Christmas that holiday feeling, you know, you go into the stores, all that music is playing and people are grabbing at things and you're supposed to be joyful and you just don't feel it. Have you ever felt like that? Yeah, come on, raise your hands. I mean, you know, I, I saw some, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not uncommon to feel that way. <laughs> I can see two people like mom. <laughs> It, it is hard to get through the holidays. Um, and for some of us, it can be harder than others. One of the great gifts that each of us can offer on this holiday is the gift of our presence. We may feel lonely ourselves, probably like Sterling, but we could get out and just take ourselves over to someone's house who is lonely and isolated and be in their presence, giving them some joy by just showing up. And you know what? 
we may walk out of there with a little more joy ourselves. Some of us can go through so much in our lives without ever knowing we are truly enjoyed by another. To show up in someone's presence who is lonely and isolated tells them, I enjoy your presence. I enjoy being with you. And not everyone feels that. Even though people may be present in their life, they, they may not feel that joy coming from someone. Brene Brown defines joy as an intense feeling of deep spiritual connection, pleasure, and appreciation. Joy is characterized by a connection with ourselves, with others, with God and nature. When you've experienced deep joy in your life, who or what do you feel connected to of those things I've just named? So when you're out gardening, you may think you're by yourself, but you're really connecting with nature, with the dirt, with the plants, with the seeds, with the joy of being outside and hearing the birds and seeing the rabbits eat your lettuce. <laughs> Maybe not so much. Or it may be when you are going through a hard time and you are feeling lonely and isolated and God somehow shows up in a blessing that you never expected or imagined. It might have been a time a friend showed up on your doorstep with a casserole when a loved one passed away. And not only did they show up with some food, but they stayed and listened to your grief. And they left you feeling grateful and joyful, just for your friendship. Joy is what God wants for us. Joy is what God wants to share with us. We are meant to live in joy. Have you ever noticed that when someone shares their joy, it's contagious? Do you ever notice that? When someone comes in smiling, they can light up the whole room and you feel it too. You just feel it come right through you. Joy is something that can't be squandered. It is meant to be shared so that others might be healed, feel affirmed, celebrated, and blessed, and loved like Mary and Elizabeth did for each other. As Desmond Tutu puts it, the goal is not just to create joy for ourselves, but to be a reservoir of joy, an oasis of peace, a pool of eternity that can ripple out to all those around you. Connectedness with God, creation, and each other is the true nature of joy. God is joy. Let us celebrate that this season and let us share it and make it contagious in our community, in our families, and mostly to those who are lonely and lost and grieving this time of year. Amen. Let us join together in the affirmation of faith found in your order of worship. We believe joy is a sacred gift and is deeper than happiness. We believe joy stems from the truth that we belong to God. We believe joy is not meant for isolation. Joy is meant to be shared, weaving us together in laughter and in hope. And when joy feels impossibly out of reach, we believe that part of being a sacred community is leaning on one another. So together we say, I will share my joy when yours runs out. You will share your joy when mine runs out. In doing so, we will both see God. Amen. 
Let us join our voices together in the hymn number 393 in your black hymnal, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. And please rise in body or spirit as you are able. be seated. After our pastoral prayer, you are invited to speak your joys or concerns out loud, and together we lift them up by saying, oh Lord, hear my prayers. And for those of you on Facebook or Zoom, you are invited also to write those joys or concerns in the comment section and they will be read aloud. So let's bring our hearts together, enjoy this day. God of joy, we come to you this morning to thank you for the way that joy binds us together Thank you for contagious laughter, for inside jokes, for stories around the dinner table that can make us laugh until we cry. Thank you for comedy shows and for the familiar sound of a loved one's chuckle and for the universality of smile lines. What a gift you have given us. Scripture reminds us that joy is better when shared. So today we thank you in particular for the Elizabeths and the Marys in our lives. We thank you for the people who spark joy in us. Thank you for the people who pull us out of our shells, who teach us how to dance and show us how to laugh. Thank you for those who declare, blessed are you. Holy God, although we know that joy is better when shared, there are days when that is easier said than done. Like Elizabeth, who stayed in isolation for months after receiving the good news, we too have a tendency to choose fear over joy. Without the help of someone at our door, we can often keep our joys to ourselves. So gracious God, when those days come, when the waters of fear rise, when isolation steals our joy, comfort us. Comfort us like a shepherd with their flock. Gather us into your arms and carry us to safer ground so that we might experience joy in the ways you have in store for us. Until that promised day, like Mary and Elizabeth, we will do our best to keep finding one another. Like Mary and Elizabeth, we will do our best to open the door for one another to you and to the joy that connects all beings. Gracious one, we pray for healing and strength for all those we lift in prayer this day, whether we speak them out loud or in the joys of our hearts, in the silence of our hearts. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. O 
O Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for joy, for me with joy, for um, the neighbors who walk with me. And when I walk to the end of my driveway and see them, I am just so grateful when they are happy. O Lord, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers of joy for the release of hostages. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are lonely and isolated at this time of the year, may they find joy. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Together, we unite our voices in joy, praying the words your son taught us to pray. Our Father, oops, we're going to sing it. We're going to sing it, sorry. <laughs> we'll sing it instead. It is in your um, pew, the sung Lord's Prayer. Thank you. <clears throat> For the joy of all of you, for the joy of this church, for the joy of connecting to each other every Sunday. We are grateful for your gifts that you bestow on us today. So it is with gratitude that we receive your gifts this day. Thank you.
Let us join together in the unison prayer of thanksgiving found in your order of worship. God of all the earth and of the universe, although our offerings are the sums and substances, we ourselves are the gifts you desire. Unfold our hope, open us to service, use us well, magnify our giving as we rejoice in your gracious presence among us. In the name of the one who was born, Emmanuel, amen. Let us join together in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And as we prepare for it, let us sing together. I come with joy, number 349, verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. You may be seated. And so I share this communion liturgy from Reverend Dr. Mary Ludy. Jesus accepted invitations from everyone and ate at many tables. He was not often the host. He was a guest among guests. At this table where we remember him, we are too are not the hosts. We are all guests, all invited by mercy, all summoned by love. Come then, everyone, and enjoy love's hospitality. Lay aside any need you have to be first or be the best, or to decide who is worthy to come and eat. Just be grateful to be here and open your hearts to praise. God, most gracious and kind, the reach of your mercy is endless. You find us all wherever we are and bring us to your table. Your guest list is as unrestricted as your love. For the gracious welcome we have all received, whether we came first or last, early or late, with hands full of gifts or with nothing at all, we praise you singing your glory this day and forever. Let us join together in the story of the bread and cup found in your order of worship. And we remember that on that night of betrayal, he ate again with his disciples in the upper room he shared and blessed bread with them and poured out the wine as signs of his coming death and signs of a life determined to love despite the risk. Whenever we eat, with whomever we eat, as guests among guests, 
we remember him. He is always with us to the end of an age. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and the fruit of the vine. By our eating and drinking, open our hearts to connect with all the other guests you are always inviting so that one day everyone who hungers and thirsts will have an honored place in your house and the best seat at your table. Amen. And so we share this meal of bread and wine, the meal where Jesus broke the bread and broke it and said, eat in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and raised it and blessed it and said, drink this in remembrance of me. So come, come to this feast. the cup that quenches the thirst of our longing.
The Cup of Salvation. Refreshed, renewed, and nourished by this meal, may we join together in the prayer of thanksgiving found in your order of worship. Thank you, God, for inviting us to this banquet of life and feeding us with the good news of Jesus and his wondrous bread and cup. You are always glad to have us here around your family table. Help us to notice who is missing. Make us everybody's neighbor. Send us to them as friends with your standing invitation to come, to eat, to know love, and be in peace at home. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our closing hymn, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, number 129. Please rise in body or spirit as you are able. Go in joy, my friends. Go in peace, go in hope, go in love. And let joy be contagious this season. Amen.
at y'all. You're still sitting around chatting. <laughs>